الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد أحبت في الله when we analyze a lot of the narrations of the Salaf al-Salih ridwan Allahi alayhim you will come to realize how much of the madhab of the Salaf is just built upon doing good deeds and avoiding evil doing good and avoiding evil and this is a way that we should how we should spend our time and how we should spend our life because the time that we have in this life is short and we require direction we require Knowing our purpose, which is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah tabarak ta'ala says in Kitab al-Kaneen, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنْسَ لَلِي عَبْدُونَ I have not created mankind and the jinn except for the purpose of worshiping me. So we see that the madhab of the Salaf al-Salih is built upon the book and the sunnah. And it's built upon doing those good deeds that the book and the sunnah exalts and avoiding and prohibiting those sinful deeds which the book in the sunnah prohibit beautiful advice on his deathbed imam hassan al-basri rahimahullah ta'ala he was on his deathbed some of the companions or some of his companions rahimahullah jami'an they came to him and said o abu sa'd Oh Abu Sa'd. They said, Oh Abu Sa'd, offer us some words you can benefit us with. He replied, I will equip you with three words. Then you must leave me to face what I am facing. Be the farthest of people from those things you have been forbidden. And be the most involved of people in the good you have been commanded to do. And know that the steps you take are two steps in your favor and a step against you. So be careful where you come and where you go. This was collected uh, an athar by Abu Naim in his book, Hilya Til Awliya. Ahabatifillah, this narration illustrates what we we're talking about and it shows that the madhab of the Salaf, the madhab of Ahl Sunnah is built upon Amr bin Maruf and Nahil al Munkar, commanding the good and forbidding the evil, practicing the good and forbidding the evil for yourselves. Do you command the people with good? with piety, with taqwa. تَأْمَرُونَ النَّاسِ بِالْبِرِ وَتَنْسَوْنَ إِنفُسُكُمْ And you forget yourself. وَأَنْتُمْ تَتْلُونَ الْكِتَابِ And you read the book. You're the one reciting the book. You're reading the Qur'an. You know the Qur'an. You know the Sunnah. أَفَلَا تَعْكِلُونَ Don't you have an intellect? أَبَتِ بِاللَّهِ An ayah such as that especially those who are active in some sort of dawah and trying to call to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that should be an awakening that should jar your heart that should affect your heart and your intellect because you know your imperfections and shortcomings and sins and you know when you're exhibiting traits of hypocrisy. This goes back to what we said when we read another athar of the Salaf. We were talking about how the Salaf viewed the intellect. They viewed the intellect as, you know, a person who was intellectual is someone who had al manafiya and practiced it. They had beneficial Islamic knowledge and they practiced. And it goes back to there is nothing greater than having some knowledge and practicing it. 
Having knowledge in making dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Having knowledge in practicing the pillars of Islam. Having knowledge in practicing uh, all the ibadah, the wajibat, and the mustahabbat. Those things which are obligations and those things which are recommended. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all with ilm al nafir askin tayyibu amin al and forgive us of our many sins. Bless us with a class with the bat. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.